description for this app and we will be ready to deploy right so we have this description the app is still working can we actually have a different detector type as default in html have a selected well, there should be selected option and click the select choose the detector type yeah those are coming from uh, the back end and we do not have a submit button yeah it's more like it this is actually what we are doing because uh, all those drop downs are being populated by the back end it's not in the html so if you want to change the default value here have to do it in python take the types have this yeah i have default detected there we actually want it to be the sheet tomasi option as such and then in return render template we have the index html a detected types and also default of the detector should be a comma right this is better get it still fast html so this default detector variable is not being used how to use default detector still in button right now in html select detector select name detector for this is the same and just change the code oops copy pasting is a skill isn't it and still not working why control five i would have expected this to be shit to mercy ah uh, let's see there's something wrong looks like there's some sort of race condition where it's being selected first but then it's changing to a different default which is not cool pretty sure we changed it to a default vector is that yeah the javascript seem to have nothing to do with it choose the detector type default detector is not working we need to make sure there's no selected option in html and there's selected mentioned there's some debugging options this will obviously work okay nothing to debug there really yeah so why it says default detector set to shit to mercy then proceed processing using fast detector why that's not cool well that's okay that's fine well, actually, you can get rid of yeah, it's actually working. Okay, let me just focus on these two sentences. I removed that code, it didn't fix the problem. You're not ready to do this, and with okay, now it's working. So, I'm setting the fault detector twice. Well, that should be okay as long as it's actually working. We have Windows labels for. She to must it be in red. Start deploying in a sec. Just a quick color change. And so the description is okay. It's what we currently have in production. So this new tool will go over here. Feature image feature extraction. Yeah, this one here. Put it up the top. And we should be ready to deploy. Like how Harris is labeling colors. Wait, did we have general a description as well? Yeah, this one what happened to index HTML. This bit is important. That's right. We have the description there. We have this thing happening twice. One of these bits can go. Yep, that's still working okay. The other thing is an option to select the region of interest. Okay, <laughs> this was happening live. JGPT just changed its uh, layout and now in default. So they removed all this uh, 
different uh, option for GPT-4 and the whole thing just has the, the one uh, option that includes DALI browsing, internet browsing and all analysis. I think what used to be called the uh, uh, code interpreter, I think it's the same thing as uh, analysis and it has an option to upload files. You can actually try this. Oops, it just happened. Yeah, they changed the layout quite a bit. Did I just lose the chat? Right, ChatGPT can now browse the web, analyze data, and generate images. These capabilities are now built into GPT-4. No need to select the available for plus users. Uh, okay, still have the chat from today. Yes, actually upload uh, this and just paste this the front end. Any suggestions? Let's see what it says. It's still as slow as before, that's for sure. I think that's pretty straightforward as it is. Yeah, we have some uh, description and functionalities at the bottom. Uh, okay, that's generic stuff. No, it's pretty quick, so we don't need that. Yeah, there's some uh, future notes as well. If the image has uh, text in it, the detector is focusing on the text, or well, at least the RS1. Uh, she to us, it does both the image features and the text. And fast, well, the fast algorithm never really works very well. That's why I changed the default to be RS, but in the, this particular image is also uh, not great. Another future thing, yeah, we have this future directions. We want to be able to select ROI, a region of interest. So this algorithm works better. Let's see what the bot thinks, especially the new improved GPT-4. Yeah, region of interest. That's right. That's not a bad description of it. Uh, okay, the description is uh, too lengthy though. I might uh, simplify it a bit. Description over here is just to the job yes so the that's the general liner yes so yeah we want to allow uploads and have a roi selection option uh, what else so say this image here which is an epileptic seizure eeg was processing for different image types yeah. for example eeg signal a specifically one with seizures or specifically for seizure uh, spike detection. Why send messages an up arrow? It's a bit odd. Yeah, so for these images you want to be able to select the region of interest. For this type of images you want to be able to uh, have more optimization features. Not like the language uses, but yeah, the language need to be I'll ask it to rewrite it how it looks like. Yeah, so it's just the paragraph there. There's nothing wrong about it, just don't like the language it uh, uses. It's a bit too corporate, but we can leave with that. Now it's looking pretty good. We would like to publish. So for publishing, uh, we have this file here. It will be a web application. Uh, we we'll publish this Flask application. We kind of know what to do. This feature extraction, let's check if the folder is correct. Feature extraction folder looks legit. Now we need to configure our Apache server file. We already have a few web applications. Yeah, we have SSL. That was actually all commented out. That should be okay. Yeah, right, that's all, uh, well, not all, but uh, some of the main uh, prompts. Uh, right, now we need to edit our Apache configuration file. Let's forget Control shift v instead of... Right, right, so we already have a bunch of Flask applications. That was the last one we deployed. It was the EG noise removal. Okay, good. Right, so we have nine 
if Flask applications deployed and we are adding another one, we can copy add this. We need to change. So we'll have then a Flask applications to change the name to feature extraction. Yeah, I'll do it manually. Just uh, a visual check. And we can save check to config test that syntax is okay now there's one bit that we always struggle with it's the fact that i think it's in i don't remember it should be in the python code we check if the call is in deployment or local server so that's probably in the javascript uh, where is it? Right, this one. Check if we are on production. Yeah, this bit goes somewhere at the beginning because the URL is uh, different. And by the way, another thing we could do quickly to see um, if Dali 3 can produce uh, it generating it within this page or you need to have Dali in a separate uh, tab something <laughs> yeah it's all one big beta isn't it yeah let's try this from see what it gives right it's actually pretty decent it's stuffing up the text can i tell it to change my front end to look uh, more similar to this yeah, I probably need something more generic because this suggests that that's how the application actually looks like and it does not. I mean, I can just take that bit, but then I can take it from the real thing. And if I had an ROI, would be better. Yeah, those images are not great. Yeah, this one could really use an ROI to do that to check if in production and yeah, because on local server we just call uh, get data and in production we need the folder as well question is how to modify this js to include to determine if the application is running in production environment or local development environment change all the names accordingly give me two responses and why to determine if your application is running in a production or development environment and change the folder names accordingly, you can use the window location as you've shown in your earlier snippet. You would then use this condition to set the base URL for your fetch calls accordingly. Right, so it's done. Right. right. I need to do it both for fetch images and fetch detectors. How about process image? And then we can put this on the environment. Same for fetch detector type. Right, so in the local environment, it's still working okay. Uh, okay, this would not work with it. Default there should be a uh, fetch images. Actually, which folder? Uh, can you help me with the previous bit? That doesn't look correct. Yes, that's correct. So, what do I replace those places? Make sure you with? replace production underscore images underscore path and production underscore detectors underscore path with the actual directory paths where your production images and detector scripts are located. Right, so this will be my Flask app. Yeah, because if on local server fetch images work, in theory in production, it should be this folder. Okay, might as well just try it, try to run it. Make sure on local server the app still works. Okay, now this will take the site down for a few seconds. This will mean that it will be the improved version of it. The image is flashing there, but then disappearing. Why? The image is flashing once. It's very interesting. Still works in, on the local server. 